Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be the Lone Ranger original air dates, July 2nd, 1943, and the title is Mariposa Gold Rush. Hope you enjoy, and again, thanks for listening. A cloud of dust and a hearty Hi-Yo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. There's danger on the trail ahead. I'm Silver. Boy! Gold. The magic word that made reckless men push insurmountable obstacles aside. Made them endure unbelievable hardships in the fierce struggle for conquest of the precious metal. One day, an old prospector came half-running, half-staggering into the small town of Mariposa, nestled comfortably in the shadow of Palermo Mountain. Look! I found it! Gold! Gold! (laughs) I found it! (laughs) Yes, Uncle Joe Littleton had struck gold in the Palermos, and overnight the peaceful settlement of Mariposa was changed to a surging, roaring boom camp. Tiny office of Sheriff Pokey Bentler. Tom, I tell you, this town has gone completely stark, raving, screaming mad. Look at him out there. Still arriving. Yeah, I know, Pokey. That gold fever sure is a powerful disease. I wish Uncle Joe would never come across that mother loading the Palermos. Here I've been sheriff for 16 years, playing nurse to a bunch of lonesome cowpokes who come to town once a month with 40 bucks in their jeans. Yeah, just look now. Yeah, now I got the whole world dumped in my lap. All on account of old Uncle Joe Littleton finding a jillion dollars worth of gold. Maybe we should get some more deputies, Pokey. <laughs> deputies? Who wants to be a deputy for 50 bucks a month? When he can go out to the Eagle Mine and make $20 a day. Hmm? Answer me that. Well, I do. Yeah, but only because you're too lazy to work with a pick and shovel. You know what? I went home last night and doggone if there ain't some dude out there with a lantern. Digging up my backyard. No, you don't say so. I'm telling you, I got a bigger job here than the President of the United States. Yeah, but you got to figure... Hey, Pokey, here comes that Jasper from the Eagle outfit again. Mr. Mace. Morning, sir. Uh, 
This here is Slim Dotry. Drive stage. Bro. I've known Slim for 30 years. What's on your mind? Hi, Slim. Howdy, Pokey. Oh, Tom. The owners back east are raising the roof with me because I'm not shipping gold out. They want to know why we aren't getting some help from the local authorities. Mm, still having trouble between here and Bayswell? Yes. Slim here got turned back again this morning. What happened, Slim? Same old thing, Pokey. Got out to the mine and picked up the ore. And come back here and loaded a couple of passengers. Then you started for Bayswell and somebody along the way made you turn back. That it? Yeah. It was about nine miles out of town this time, laying up in that cutback. Well, we come along, they started pouring rifle slugs at us. Nobody hurt? Well, they wasn't trying to hurt nobody. Just making them Winchesters point the way down the back trail. It's got to stop, I tell you. You'll never get that gold through the railroad for shipment. Uh-huh, sure, Mr. Mace. That's your name, ain't it? Yes, that's right, Edward R. Mace. Mm-hmm. And hard to figure why anyone would want to waste time and ammunition just scaring a stagecoach carrying gold. Mighty funny. Well, the owners back east don't think it's funny. How long since you got a trip through to Bayswell, Slim? Shucks, I get into Bayswell three times a week with passengers. It's only when I got that doggone gold on board there's any trouble. I got a hunch whoever it is is bluffing, maybe trying to be funny. Next time they crack down, I got a notion to shake out the lines and go raring right on through. Uh, No, you better not try that, Slim. What are you doing with all this gold coming from the mine, Mr. Mace? The only thing we can do is store it here in town at the bank. That isn't too safe. What I've got to do is get that stuff to the railroad for shipment. Point is how. I don't rightly know, Mr. Mace. Maybe you fellas ought to just take the stuff back to where Uncle Joe found it and bury it in the ground again. I reckon it was pretty safe there for a couple of million years. Now, look here, Sheriff. This is a mighty serious business. The owners of the Eagle Mine are going to demand protection. They'll want to know what you're doing about it. Tell them my office is closed and I went fishing. Come on, Tom. Out of the way, Injun. This doorway ain't no place for sleeping. Um, me watch gold rush. White man, plenty big hurry to get rich. White man, plenty big fool, if you ask me, Redskin. Hey, Pokey, what the dickens is that coming up the street? Hmm? Looks like a wagon full of... Hey, them soldiers. Why, Sheriff, those soldiers have been in a fight. Yeah, and from the looks of them, they didn't come out winners. Oh, oh, there. Well, we better look into this. Now, what's wrong there? You fellas look like you've been sorting wildcats. Say, where can I find... You're the sheriff? Yeah, I'm Pokey Bentler. I'm Captain Danvers, commanding the cavalry outpost at Devil's Crossing. Perhaps I should say what's left of it. Yeah? What's happened, Captain? Well, we were ambushed on the trail. These 15 men are all that's left of a troop of 65 soldiers. Holy jumping Jupiter! No wonder they're bandaged up. Ambushed, you say? You mean engines? Yes. A war party of about 400 Apaches using bows and arrows. Uh, this is Major Parker, Sheriff. He's looking after the men. Howdy, Howdy, Sheriff. Here's one of the arrows. Got me in the leg. Mm, It's a nasty-looking weapon, all right. We need your help, Sheriff. The men won't be able to travel for several days. Think you could uh, help us find a place to stay? Sure, you bet, Captain. Uh, Sheriff, you let me see arrow? Yeah, here. Tom, there's 15 men here, not counting the captain and the major. You get busy and find a place to stay for a few days. Sure, Pokey. I'll go see Mom Whitaker first. Say, who's this engine here? I don't know, Captain. Never seen him before. Who are you, Redskin? Me, Tonto. Yeah? Well, hand over that arrow and get out of my sight. From now on, far as I'm concerned, the only good engine is a dead engine. Just a minute. You an Apache? No, me not Apache. But me savvy Apache, plenty good. You do, eh? Well, the Apaches are going to savvy us plenty good when we get through with them. Get moving, engine. Uh-huh. Me go, Pronto. Yeah, you better. And pass the word around that I'm coming back here with enough soldiers to kill every redskin in the territory. Get him up! Come. Later that day, the stalwart Indian Tonto arrived at the Lone Ranger's camp with a masked rider and his nephew, Dan Reed, listened silently to his narrative of what had happened in town. Were the soldiers badly wounded, Tonto? Ah. Uh, uniform plenty torn. Them wear much bandage. Major, him get air and leg. Him not walk good. Me, look at air. Golly, Tonto, what did it look like? Uh, it hunting air. 
Dangerous weapon, Dan. Gee, I didn't think there were any Indians on a warpath around here. Neither did I, Dan. But if that's the case, we'd better investigate right away. You and I are going to Mariposa, Tonto. I want to have a talk with Captain Danvers and also the sheriff. You see sheriff about shooting at stagecoach? No, not yet. But I'm glad you overheard that conversation at the sheriff's office. We may get a chance to look into that. A feller named Mace. Him plenty mad. Sheriff not do something. Sheriff, him discussed with Gold Rush. I've never met Sheriff Bentler personally, but I know his reputation. I have a hunch he isn't as disinterested as he appears to be. Of course, this man Mace is justified in asking for protection for the gold shipments. Can I ride into town with you? No, not this time, Dan. I have a much more important job for you. Uh, What's that, sir? Can you remember the trail from here to Bayswell? Oh, sure. That's where the railroad is. Yes, and it's also the nearest telegraph point. I want you to go to Bayswell and send a telegraph message to Colonel Pomeroy, in charge of the cavalry regiment at Abilene. All right. It's a long ride, but Victor will get you there before morning. Now, send the message as soon as you arrive, and go to the hotel and get some sleep. Wait for an answer from the colonel and bring it to me in Mariposa. Uh Uh-huh. Well, where'll I find you when I return? I don't look for me. I'll be wearing a disguise. You find Tonto, and he'll tell you where I am. Now, get your horse saddle while I prepare the message to the colonel. (laughs) Yes, sir. Come on, Victor. Here, boy, you're going to get plenty of exercise tonight. Tonto, get my other clothes from my saddlebags, will you? Help me to disguise my face. Uh Uh-huh. Me fix disguise plenty good. I don't know just what lies ahead, but something tells me we're riding into one of the biggest jobs we've ever come up against. It was late the following afternoon when Tonto rode down the main street of Mariposa and dismounted near the sheriff's office. A few minutes later, wearing ordinary cowboy clothes and with his face completely disguised with a skillful Tonto, the Lone Ranger rode up to the hitch rail in front of the hotel. Go, Silver Boy, steady. I'd like to see Captain Danvers, please. Yes, sir. He and the majors got room upstairs. Couldn't put up the rest of the soldiers here to the hotel, but got them fixed up over to Mom Whitaker's and a couple other places around town. That's fine. Now, where can I... Doggone, I sure hate to think what's going to happen to them murdering redskins when the captain comes back with a regiment of soldiers. Yes, I imagine Them Apaches will pay and pay plenty, mister. They can't go around attacking the United States troops and get away with it. Just as soon as the captain's men are able to ride, they're hitting the trail for Abilene. When they come back with a regiment of... What room is Captain Danvers in? Who? Oh, sure, Danvers. He's in 210, upstairs, and turn left. Thank you. Yes, sir. When the United States Army gets back with them Apaches, they'll, they'll wish they'd never... Eh, that fellow's got more poor manners. Well, yeah. Yes? Captain Denvers, I'd like to see you for a moment. I, uh... Come in, stranger. What's on your mind? I, uh... I didn't mean to interrupt. I didn't know that you were busy. I'm not busy, stranger. Just visiting with Mr. Mace here. Uh, what can I do for you? I uh, heard about your trouble with the Indians. Came up to see if I could help. I'm, well, sort of handy with dressings and bandages. Oh, is that so? Well, we have Major Parker with us. He's a fine doctor. Say, Mace, I want to talk to you. Uh, <clears throat> come in, Major. Well, if I can't help, I'll be going... Oh, uh, understand you'll be riding to Abilene as soon as your men are able to travel. That's right. Most any day now. I have a good friend with the cavalry at Abilene, Colonel Martin. Uh, he's in charge there, I think. Oh, yes. Do uh, you know the colonel, you say? Yes, I know the colonel, Captain. I know the colonel very well. Give him my regards when you see him. Say, who was that, Jasper, anyway? I don't know. You ought to know better than to come barging up here like you did. And you're supposed to be all crippled up. Hey, just a minute. The stranger dropped something as he was leaving the room. Hey, look. You men know what this is? Sure, that's a bullet. Looks like it was made of silver. Yes, it's a silver bullet. That man who just walked out of here is the Lone Ranger. What? The Lone Ranger? Oh, you're crazy, Mace. The Lone Ranger wears a mask. Why, you fool, he was disguised. I thought there was something funny about the way he looked. Hey, Wait. Yeah, you're right, Mace. That Indian by the sheriff's office said his name was Tonto. There's no telling how much he knows or suspects. We'll have to hurry before he spoils everything. Collins, get busy. Round up your men and get them ready to travel. Yeah, but don't you think... Don't argue with me. We've got too much at stake to take a chance on that Lone Ranger. All right. Be ready in an hour. Harley, you come with me. We'll catch that Lone Ranger, Jed, before he leaves town. 
and make sure he don't interfere. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue our story. Slim Doherty, driver of the Overland Stage Company, had been on the driver's seat of a Concord coach for more than 30 years. As Slim tooled the six-in-hand hitch up to the Mariposa Hotel, he shoved the brake down hard with a booted foot and hauled back on the line. Oh! Hard, you horses! Hard, Oh! Hard, Any passengers for Bayswell? Very one, Slim. Reckon everybody knows you've just been out to the mine and picked up another shipment of gold. Yeah? What about it? <laughs> Shucks, man. Ain't it bad enough to ride that thing with you driving without having to dodge rifle bullets, too? Well, now, I'll tell you. It's been going on so long, I'm apt to feel plumb lonesome if they don't shoot at us this trip. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tom, come on, get yourself up here and we'll be rolling. Uh, come on, Slim. <laughs> All right, boy, turn her loose and let her ramble. Here, there. Get up there. Get on. Well, Slim, I brought along my old sharps today. Any of them critters start getting sassy this trip, I'm going to talk back. Uh, waste of time, Bill. The ordinary coyotes hide so far up in the brush, I ain't never seen one of them yet. What's your figures behind it all, Slim? I don't rightly know what to think. But if they do cut loose on us, I'm a good notion to shake out the lines and let the pony stretch and run for Brazewell. You still figure their fellas are just bluffing, eh, Slim? Well, I don't know. I'm sure willing to find out. You game? Yeah, yeah, sure, I'm game, Slim. Well, we're almost a six-mile crossing. Ain't no sign of trouble so far. Well, maybe them Jeffs has got tired of wasting ammunition. Yeah. Well, it suits me if they did. They can quit whenever they've a mind it. Whoa, looks like we spoke too soon. Now, what do you say, partner? Still willing to try him? Sure. Let her roll, Slim. I just come along to enjoy the scenery anyway. Go in there. Get moving, folks. Ah. Hey, them dudes are shooting for Keith. I can't stop now, partner. Help me in there. Come on, you flea-bit pony. Stretch your legs and run. Come, ah, pony. Get moving. Push up. Down. 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 Slim, you dirty murdering pole cats out. Oh. Oh. After leaving Captain Danvers, Major Parker, and Mr. Mace, the mine operator in the hotel room where he dropped the silver bullet, the Lone Ranger hurried out to the street where he found Dan's horse, Victor, standing beside the great silver at the hitch rail. A moment later, the Lone Ranger was joined by Tonto and Dan Reed. Dan, I'm glad you're back. Did you send my message to Colonel Pomeroy? Yes, sir. I waited for the answers you told me to. Here. Here it is. Good boy. Thanks. You must have ridden hard to make such good time. Let me see. Exactly as I thought. Uh, what message say? Plenty, Kimosabe. Just about confirms everything I suspected. Now listen, both of you. They've got to move fast. Otto, you take the trail west and ride as fast as you can until you meet a detachment of soldiers heading this way. Lead them into town and hurry. Uh-uh. Me bring soldiers and hurry. Get them out, scout! Then, run over to the sheriff's office and tell him to get over to Mr. Anderson's office at the bank just as fast as he can. Yes, sir. And wait for me at the sheriff's office. Said a big fellow. Come on, Silver! As 
As Tonto raced like the wind along the trail leading westward out of town, Dan Reed ran quickly to the sheriff's office with the Lone Ranger's message. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger reigned in the great white stallion at the rear of the bank and quickly got out of the disguise he'd been wearing. With the small black mask once more covering his features, he was again the invincible champion of justice, the mask rider of the plains. A moment later, Mr. Jeffrey Anderson, president of the Mariposa Bank, looked up in speechless amazement at the man standing in the doorway of his private office. What do you want? I don't be alarmed, sir. I have something of great importance to tell you. That mask, you're not... How much gold is stored in this bank, Mr. Anderson? Gold? You can't get away with it, masked man. You couldn't even start to carry it away with you. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not after the gold. But I think you can expect someone, and soon. No, I don't won't let you. Don't reach for that gun. Keep your hands away from that desk drawer. Hi, Jeff. Some kid said you want to see me. Hey, what's going on here? Grab him, Pokey. You're just in time. Come in, Sheriff. Keep your hand away from that gun until you hear what I have to say. Just come in, Pokey. He was fixing to hold me up. Oh, nonsense. That boy who gave you the message to hurry over here travels with me. Huh? You mean you sent for me? That's right. Say, this don't make sense. It will, to both of you. Sheriff, I understand that the Overland stage is leaving here. Haven't been able to move any gold to the railroad. Well, what do you know about that? Only what Tonto overheard at your office the other morning. Tonto? Oh, that engine. Yes, he travels with the boy and me. He happened to overhear your conversation with Slim, the stage driver, and uh, Mr. Mace from the mine. Sure, I remember that engine now. He was loafing in the doorway while we were talking. Except that he wasn't loafing, he was listening. I think you'll be glad he did listen. Sure, if you're going to arrest this hombre or just chew the fat with him all day. Uh, yeah. Just where do you fit into this picture, stranger? Here, Sheriff. Read this telegraph message. I think it will tell you everything you want to know. Hmm. See. Read it out loud, Pokey. Yeah. See, it says... Positive, no Indian trouble at Devil's Crossing. Sending Captain Danvers and detachment to investigate situation immediately. My compliments to the Lone Ranger. Signed, Colonel J.B. Pomeroy, commanding officer, 4th... Cavalry. The Lone Ranger. Are you the Lone Ranger? Yes, that's right, Sheriff. The Lone Ranger. Well, of all... uh, uh, Jeff, you know what this means? It means that the Captain Danvers at the hotel and all the soldiers in town here are fakes. Well, I'll be hanged. I'm thinking you would have been if this fellow hadn't found him out. I think we're going to find out shortly that there isn't a wounded man in the whole lot. But what's it all about? Why should Believe me, Sheriff, there isn't time to explain now. Get out of here quickly. There's not a single moment to lose. Round up all the men you can find with guns and hurry back to the bank as fast as you can. Are you leaving us so soon, are you, Captain? Yes, the men are able to travel now, so we'll be going. Sure hate to see you go, sir. But believe me, it'll be a pleasure to see you come back and even up with them murdering redskins. We'll be back, don't worry. The men are ready, Captain Danvers. All right. Oh, you sure that leg won't bother you too much to ride, Major? I'll make her. Come on. Well, Corporal, did you get horses for all the men? Oh, yes, sir. Down the street to the hitch rail. By the bank. Good. Come on, men. All right, let's get started. Now, listen, we all know what to do. Becker, you take care of the cashier. Mac and Lefty will take care of any customers. Yeah. The rest of you get the gold and don't waste no time. If you have to do any shooting, see that you make a good job of it. Here we are, Ace. Uh, hey, watch it, everybody. There's a the sheriff. Howdy, Captain. Looks like you might be leaving us. That's right, Sheriff. Been taking it easy long enough. <laughs> Got to get back to duty. Mm-hmm. Well, just be careful you fellas don't run into another uh, surprise attack. Well, we'll be careful, all right. Is your horses here? Yes, yes. We have a long ride. So I told the livery man he could count on a fat bonus if he got us extra good horses. Mm -hmm. Right nice looking ponies. Yes, yes. The government will send him the money from Abilene as soon as we get back. Sure. Oh, Major, I think we should all go into the bank while we're right here and let every man express his thanks to Mr. Anderson for being so good to us while we've been here. Good idea, Captain. See you later, Sheriff. Come on, man. Lefty. Stick by the door here and keep an eye on the sheriff. Mm. Say, what's wrong here? Where's the clerks and the cashier? Stand where you are. First man that moves will stop later. Hey, it's a trap. Let's, Let's get out of here. Let him have it. Put on your guns and surrender. Hey, that's a lone ranger. Come on. The sheriff. He's got the door covered. We're trapped. Put on your guns and surrender. You'll be 
wiped out of your nose. That's the army coming. We ain't got a chance. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Don't let anyone get away. Where can I find the Lone Ranger? Right here, sir. Oh, Colonel Pomeroy sends his compliments, sir. Thank you, Captain. You arrived just in time. They threw down their guns when they saw you coming. We did manage to get a little action on the way into town. Yes? Tonto had told us about the shooting that had been done at the stagecoaches. And on the way into town, we caught the men who were behind it. Corporal Sanders, bring up those prisoners. Yes, sir. I'm sorry to say that we were too late to save the driver and guard. Evidently, Slim had come to the conclusion that whoever was doing the shooting was bluffing. They weren't. Slim tried to run through the bullet barrage. Both he and the guard were killed. Murdering varmints. I'll get them killers if it's the last thing I do. Captain Denver saved you the trouble, Sheriff. He and his men caught every one of them red-handed. There they are. What? Hey, them fellas are all from the Eagle Mine. That's Mr. Mace. Yes, Mace was the brains of the outfit. He brought the fake bunch of soldiers into town. He was a man in back of all the shooting that was done at the stagecoach. I demand an explanation for this outrage, Sheriff. That's a terrible mistake. Yes, you're right, Mace. You're the one who made that terrible mistake. I'm the manager of the Eagle Mine here. I demand... Take them away, Corporal. Put them all under heavy guard. They'll have the murder of Slim and Owen to answer for. What I can't figure out is how you got wise to them fake soldiers in the first place. They sure had me fooled. You can thank Tonto for that, Sheriff. Remember the day those soldiers came to town and you let Tonto examine that hunting arrow? Mm. Yeah, I remember. The moment Tonto examined that arrow, he knew that it wasn't made by Apaches... That aroused my suspicions enough to warrant sending a message to Colonel Pomeroy, who confirmed everything that I suspected. Also, when I visited the fake Captain Danvers at the hotel, I mentioned something about Colonel Martin. He pretended to know him. Actually, there isn't any Colonel Martin. Now you tricked me, blast you. He even dropped that silver bullet in my room of purpose. You tricked yourself, Collins. And as for the silver bullet, I knew that would make you act immediately. Or you were really ready to strike. Hold on there, masked man. You just call this hombre Collins. Yes, and if you look through your file, Sheriff, I imagine you'll find reward notices for both Ace Collins and his partner, Ed Mace. Whatever reward money there is for that pair will be yours. Tonto, where's Dan? Dan, right here. An horse's ready, Kimo All right, Tonto. Hey, just a minute, masked man. Mr. Anderson wants to see you at the bank. Tell him now's a good time to get rid of that gold while the cavalry's here. They'll score it to Bayswell for him. But you can't leave yet. We ain't even thank you. Come on, Victor. Well, you know, Captain, I sure hate to think what a clean in this town would have taken if that lone ranger hadn't come along when he did. You're right, Sheriff. Well, we'll get our prisoners together and start back. Mm. And please, Captain, take that gold with you while you're going. Every time I look at that bank, I get a headache. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.